My guest today has been through a lot of heartache and grief in her life. She's here to tell us part of that story today and how in the middle of all of that, she learned more about God's unfailing love and compassion. Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I'm really glad that you could join us today. My guest today is Natasha Owens, and it's so good to meet you and have you here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, your story is just, um, it's filled with so many different components, but to look at you, you know, with a successful music career, and you're going to share some of that music today, um, and it kind of really came to you in the midst of a really deep trial of losing your dad. Yeah, it did. Uh, my dad was cleaning his guns and bullet in the chamber went off and hit him in the heart. And so life as I knew it was gone. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I would ever get a second chance. And I went through the shock and tried to be strong for everyone. And about the year mark is when I actually dealt with a grief, which was way too long to suppress it. Yeah. And I would think, Natasha, some of that was just maybe that you were numb and just that you were trying to help everybody else deal with it. Just in survival mode, you yeah. know, just one day at a time, just trying to get through the day. And I got stuck in an anger stage of grief mm -hmm. and down spiraled very quickly into depression. Mm -hmm. And about six months into my depression, my pastor called and said, we need you to be the music minister. And I said, let me give you a glimpse of my day. I can't get out of bed most days and I'm not a good mom, not a good wife. Mm -hmm. I can't function and I'm angry at God and you want me to you know, get up every week and tell people how great God is and mm -hmm. I just don't feel like he's great. So let me ask you this, were you on, on the praise team, was there was there something like that? that yeah, the I was. Made? I was over the praise team at the time that it happened. Kind of retreated and and gave up that position. So I I was one that struggled with anxiety and just never wanted to be out in the forefront. I didn't mind behind the scenes organizing. I didn't mind singing, but I did not want to take a step up a few feet. Mm -hmm. And so he said he kept calling, mm -hmm. and he called me on a day that I was already convinced that the world would be a better place without me. And he said, I feel like this is your last lifeline. You need to do this. And I said, I can't even open up my Bible. Is that the type of minister you want? And he said, that's the type that God wants, and it's a process. Mm -hmm. So from... That's a wonderful pastor that yeah. can see through all of that. Because your dad, he was just 58 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And he had cleaning guns. It wasn't the first time he ever cleaned a gun. No, he was the epitome of gun safety, Con you yeah. know, concealed license. He, he knew how to handle a gun, but he was dealing with a very dangerous gun. Yeah. And it, that made all the difference in the world. He yeah. missed a step. Yeah. And there are, there are tragic accidents. And I think that that's very hard, especially for people of faith. Right. You know, because right. we pray, we believe, and then for something like that to happen. And so, you tried to be strong for everybody, but yet you were feeling like you weren't a good mom, you weren't a good wife. Right, and it was the things that I spoke. Our tongue, mm -hmm. it has so much power in it. We have the power of life and death in our tongue, according to Proverbs. So um, what we say is begins to be what we think. Yeah. And so I put myself into depression because I spoke negativity, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, from I took the position, and from that point forward, it was a, I didn't get further away from God. It took me a while to get closer to him, but I would turn on the, the music for that week that I would, that, you know, it was put on in my head, on my heart, and pretty soon I was out of bed, and so I used the music to get me out of bed before I could get to a place where I could open up my Bible, mm -hmm. yeah. and then eventually his word. So it was a training ground for what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. and never thought that I would go in this direction because of my anxiety. Yeah. Uh, you, to think, first of all, that you wanted to be just a behind-the-scenes mm -hmm. person all along, but then that you were also in the midst of grief and depression and right. feeling like really that you couldn't fulfill just the daily responsibilities of life, but then to take on more and to to come to the place to understand where your pastor even said, but Natasha, it's a process. And you know, for so many of you that are watching, you may be in the middle of grief or a huge crisis and you just think I'm not close to God anymore. And sometimes that's how it feels for us, but sometimes in an instant we're delivered from that and other times it is a process, it's step by step. And for you, it was listening to the music for the week, the worship music and that, help to pull you out of that right. downward spiral. 
Right. It sure did. And it took me years to dig out of that hole. Mm -hmm. You know, fear is something that I, I was gripped with. I just didn't want to face the day because um, I didn't, I feared what would be in that day and I just couldn't take any more bad news. Was it like, you know? like impending doom? Like, like you lost your dad tragically at just 58. And so when you get up in the morning, right. what other bad thing could happen? I began to over control everything in my life. My kids, uh, worried about their safety, um, tremendous worry. And it just, between that, we own our own businesses. I just couldn't face, I didn't have enough strength to face what could come down that day. And so therefore it was better just to stay in bed, Yeah, you know, but God gave me that strength and he gave me a second chance. And he, um, he is, has now placed in my heart, this mission to not only I overcame, but to show people that if I can make it through, they can make it through and they can thrive. It's a word of our testimony. We have to take what we've learned and we have to help somebody else. That's how we truly overcome. Yeah. You know, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our right. testimony. And so you're saying that your overcoming didn't happen like in an instant, it but didn't. in a process. And so now you're at a place that you can pour into other people who maybe also feel like I can't get out of bed, Natasha. Right. Like it's just that bad. So tell me about now and pouring into other people and what that's like for you as somebody that struggled with anxiety and just wanting to be behind the scenes. You know, I, st I still struggle. That's something that still comes into my, my head, you know, from the moment 30 minutes before a show to mm -hmm. the first note that comes out. You know, I, I get paralyzed sometimes by anxiety and fear, but God is with me and I know he's with me and every, I'm still in the healing process. I think I will be in that stage for the rest of my life to some degree, mm -hmm. you know? You know, I think that's true. I think sometimes we make it seem like, you know, I believe in God and so I said amen and it all comes together. But we're in a fallen world right. and it's like we're we're saved and we're being saved and we're always in a healing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, we are. It's a process for all of us every day. So you even now still. <laughs> yeah, still. <laughs> but you know, it's so rewarding for me because the moment I start ministering and letting God mm -hmm. minister to the crowd and so forth, it uh, it gives He gives me healing in return. That's right. And it's such a peace that comes over me that um, you know I just want. My whole mission in life is to give people a little bit of hope, to know, to let them know that God has never left them. Amen. And that He is there, He hears them, and that He will get them through. They just have to, it's a battlefield of the mind. Yes, it is. And if they break it down and they do things like have a couple worship songs, or I used to write scriptures on my arm or put five scriptures in my pocket. Mm -hmm. The moment I felt like I was down spiraling, I'd pull it out and say, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but he's given me a sound mind and peace. Mm -hmm. And by the first or second scripture, okay, I can face the day. Five seconds later, I'm doing it again. So in a concert, I don't really consider it a concert. I consider it a worship experience, mm -hmm. a healing experience. And if I can give them a little bit of hope and a little bit of tools to yeah. break down the day <laughs> to where they can overcome the mind. Because if you overcome what's between your two ears, you've won the battle. Absolutely. And I think part what you're saying is so important to have practical tools and practical steps because we all struggle with something, if not many somethings. And so right. you're saying even though God has opened up these incredible doors and you have this successful music career, that that's really worship you are taking yourself through the same process every day yeah. and you are an overcomer and you're overcoming. Tell me about some of the songs that you're going to do for us today and how those came about. Well, you know, my, my dad on his tombstone, he, he wrote a Sunday school lesson the year that he died called the dash. And it's after that poem that's called the dash. Yeah. It's not the beginning date or the end date on a tombstone. It's the middle dash that represents your entire life and then the most important piece. So I wanted to do something to honor him and to honor the legacy of how he lived and how God wants us to live. Amen. So one of the songs is legacy and it just talks about how we have to love unconditionally like God loves us mm -hmm. and that we have to leave something behind, um, you know, giving to people, not expecting anything in return and training our kids to act Amen. and represent yeah. Christ like that. Yeah. And I think what a gift that your dad <laughs> taught that Sunday school lesson right. so that you would have something 
he left something to me to, to carry on, yeah. you know, just in how he lived. Mm -hmm. And um, another song is called We Will Rise. It's the title track to our newest CD that just came out. And it just pretty much represents a complete anthem song of restoration to where you rise from God will rise you up from the fire and put those pieces back together. Yeah. So it's become an anthem song. Uh, and then we're going to sing wings. It's just, um, you know, things go in your life that you regret. Sometimes people regret their past. Mm -hmm. And this song just pretty much says, don't regret anything in your past because it's that past that's made you who you are today. And it's the same wind that knocks you down also gives you the wings to fly above it. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? You know, when God says that he works, even the things that are meant for evil in our lives, that He works those things for good. And we don't always know how God is going to work those things for good, but He promises that our part is to obey Him. It's to take that step by right. step. And I would imagine, Natasha, even now, talking about, you know, legacy and we will rise, you're still dealing with stuff, and yet you're out there worshiping Him pouring into the lives of others. Because I think sometimes we think, well, you know, as soon as all the conditions get right, you know, as, as soon as I'm past this, then Natasha, I'll do that. But you just stepped out there in the middle of it. Yeah, I, yeah, and it was a process. The first CD is really the first part of my testimony. And then the second CD is the third part. Mm -hmm. I mean, the second part, and then we're going down to the third part. Uh -huh. And so it's, a, it's my process that I have walked my heart that is poured into these songs mm -hmm. to, um, to, well, it's like a training ground. I was very strategic. And when I went into the producer, I actually had an org chart, which is so not like a musician. <laughs> I know it's not at all. You and had an org chart. Th they said that's the first for every, everything, mm -hmm. you know? So <laughs> I had an org chart with, um, rising above in the middle. And then mm -hmm. every song is like a training song, uh, to, teach people how to rise above and make it through a circumstance. Because we do have to learn, you know, yeah. because the natural thing to do in a fallen world is everything goes wrong, you fall down. I mean, that's just in the natural, that's what happens. What is it like for your husband now and your children? Because they saw you when you couldn't get out of bed and to see you now, how has that impacted them and their faith? Well, you know, they just didn't know how to help me, which yeah. was a very helpless feeling for them. Um, so that's all better. Um, one thing that my, my oldest son, he's 17 now, and um, a year or two ago, we we hope that our sacrifice on the road never takes away from our kids. Amen. We try very hard to keep them balanced yeah. and not resent my music right. ministry. Exactly. And so uh, I had a tour that was through March, and I couldn't go on a trip that I had promised my son. And I said, I'm going to make a way. I'm going to have somebody take you. I'm going to make sure that you go, but I can't go, and I'm so sorry for that. Mm -hmm. And he said, Mom, you're helping people, and mm -hmm. I see that. Mm -hmm. And he said, you need to be out there on the road. There's people out there that need you more than me. Wow. And I sat back and cried and thought, thank God that they're seeing what I'm yes. trying to do. They, you they're know? seeing the value and the purpose. Well, we're out of our time to talk. So we're going to have you do some songs for us. So awesome. if you stay with us, this is Natasha Owens. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. He's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yeah. go after that.
is working. God is working for our good. And when we feel he's not looking, God is working. Difference, a story to remember long after we're gone. Each chapter filled with beauty, each page a priceless tapestry worth passing on. Life cannot be measured by. Things we attain, but only by the things we give away. Let my heart be reaching out to go the extra mile and be somebody's need upon my own to give without concern of some. Selfless way of life, and what a legacy to leave behind.
Hello again, familiar feel, feels like I've been standing here forever and it's hard to know what's real. I look ahead and see the climb and try to find the strength inside. I wonder if my heart would ever heal. You lead me. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Prayer changes things. 
If you need prayer, write to the address on the screen. Call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. If you would like to contact WHTN, you can write to the address on the screen or call us at 615-754-0039 or visit us on the web at www.ctntv.org.